If you've had a car for a long time, you'll have got entirely used to how it works. And you may be at a point where you overlook its quirks and its shortcomings and the compromises that go into making them work. EVs aren't perfect, but neither were internal combustion engine cars. It's just that we're so used to them, we might not necessarily appreciate some of their shortcomings. Driving an EV gives you an alternate impression of the way that the ice world used to be. And based on that experience, here are 10 things that I think you won't miss in your internal combustion engine car once you switch to an EV. One of the things I didn't find very enjoyable about having a car with a manual gearbox was being stuck in slow moving traffic, having to pump the clutch and go up and down the gearbox in order to make progress through the traffic. An EV doesn't need a clutch, so there's no clutch pumping involved. Just two pedals and most of the time you only use the accelerator. Isn't it frustrating when you go to pull away from a standstill or maybe pull out and overtake someone and you find that you're in the wrong gear? You see, an internal combustion engine car has a limited power band and we're constantly having to use the gearbox in order to switch between the efficient mode and low RPM and the high power modes that come higher up the rev range. We constantly have to balance efficiency and power in an internal combustion engine car to get the best out of it. Now an auto can overcome some of these things, but it's quite inefficient and it can be expensive to buy. An EV has no gears, it needs no gearbox, and therefore there's never uh, the wrong gear to be in. You always have power, you always have torque, and you can always pull away or overtake very easily. Whether you do them yourself or you pay for your servicing, all changes, are not the most enjoyable thing there is. You see, inside an internal combustion engine, there are very high temperatures, and we get combustion byproducts at those very high temperatures, which can contaminate the oil and mean that over time it becomes less effective and can increase the wear on the engine. And therefore, it will need regular oil changes in order to keep it in tip top condition. Without an engine, though, an EV doesn't need any oil changes. I don't think you'll miss oil changes at all. Oh, cold mornings, getting into a cold car and having to wait for it to heat up and then de-ice it and de-mist the inside of the windscreen. Oh, not, not the thing I enjoy the most. A heat engine, like an internal combustion engine, generates heat as a byproduct of the way it works. And we use that heat, that waste heat, we feed it into the cabin in order to warm us up. But that means that we have to wait for the engine to warm up before we start getting that heat, so it can take a little time to do that. EVs, on the other hand, don't generate much waste heat because they're more efficient. They have a custom cabin heating system, and because it's custom, it can work much faster. Not only that, but most EVs have an application which means you can start the preheating from the comfort of your own home before you even go out to the car. Let's face it, refueling isn't the most fun thing to do. Standing and waiting, holding a pump, seems an eternity for the tank to fill up. You've got the smell of the fuel, which is not necessarily very pleasant. You might get fuel on your hands, particularly if the person using the pump before you was a bit careless. Getting diesel on your hands, oh, it's horrible. In an EV, you don't have any of that. You see, in an EV, you don't wait. You plug it in and you walk away and you go and do something else. Imagine standing at a fuel pump, turning it on, and then pouring it down the drain. In a way, that's what you do with an internal combustion engine car. There's a limit to how efficient they can be, based on Carnot's theorem, which says that effectively a petrol engine's maximum efficiency, the best it can do, is about 30%. Use 30% of the energy in the fuel in order to generate forward power. A diesel's a bit better, a diesel can get up to about 50%, maybe a little bit more, but even so, quite a lot of the fuel you put into the tank doesn't turn into motive power. That's just a limitation of a heat engine. 
You're paying for fuel that you don't use in order to get where you're going. An EV, on the other hand, is about 90% efficient between the inlet, where you put the electricity, and using the car to move forward. Perhaps 85%, but normally more like 90%. Much more efficient. And that's something I think you'll really appreciate. If you're mechanically minded, like me, if you have mechanical sympathy for the car that you drive, you may stress about a car overheating when you're sat in traffic or at a standstill. Certainly I have. You see, an internal combustion engine car generates very high heats in the engine and it needs a high pressure cooling system in order to stop the water boiling because of the heat that's generated so that it remains able to carry that heat away from the engine and stop the engine from being damaged. An EV also has a cooling system, but it's working at much lower temperatures and therefore it isn't pressurized. And the chance of overheating is almost none in an EV because when you're at a standstill, you're not even generating any heat anyway. EVs are much better at standing in traffic than an internal combustion engine car. Every year, there seems to be increasing regulation over internal combustion engine car emissions. Every year, it seems to be a little bit more difficult to get the car to work the way that it's required. Many years ago, the London congestion charge was introduced as a way of trying to control the number of people driving in the centre of London because that was generating pollution, which was bad for people's health. Since then, the ultra-low emission zone has been added around the London congestion charge zone. And that's another way to control the potential for pollution. And ultra-low emission zones are popping up in many cities in the country now. An MOT test includes an emissions test. And if you're anything like me, that can cause a bit of trouble. Candy, unfortunately, has now failed three MOTs for emissions tests. Fortunately, all for things that we could fix. But emissions tests are one of the worst things to have to, a failure on because sometimes it's not clear what's causing that test failure. In July 2025, Euro 7 is introduced as further curbing the potential for emissions from cars, this time to try to control the amount of nitrogen oxides generated by the engine, which cause people with asthma a lot of problems. And your car may also be fitted with a start-stop system, again, in order to try to control the emissions that are generated when you're at a standstill. An EV has no tailpipe emissions. It doesn't even have a tailpipe. An EV can't fail an emissions test. Emissions tests will never apply to them because there are no emissions. This might be the most controversial topic of all. But next I want to talk about whether it's really fun to hear the engine running. Under certain circumstances, a really nice car can sound quite good. But I'll wager that in a lot of conditions, you don't find it as much fun. For example, when you're sat in traffic, it doesn't sound all that great really to just hear noise all around you of all the engines running. It's also not all that much fun at constant speed when you're sat on a motorway or a dual carriageway. An EV is the ultimate form of sleeper, really. They're fast, and yet they're very quiet. After driving an EV, you might even find that you consider noise to be vulgar. In theory, an internal combustion engine converts hydrocarbons and oxygen to CO2 and water vapour, and nothing else. The reality is that it's not quite like that, and that's because we don't put oxygen into an engine, we put air in an engine, which has got a whole lot of other things in it besides oxygen. That results in some rather unpleasant side effects from the combustion process. One of the things that can go wrong is the generation of carbon monoxide if the burn is not particularly clean. Modern internal combustion engine cars have catalytic converters to try to convert as much of that carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide as possible. And that's because carbon monoxide is highly toxic. But a catalytic converter is not always 100% effective and carbon monoxide is still produced by the engine under certain circumstances. 
If you stay in an enclosed area with an internal combustion engine car, the carbon monoxide and even the carbon dioxide that are produced can damage your health and in some circumstances even become fatal. Do not run an internal combustion engine car in a confined space. So that's my top 10 of the things I don't think you'll miss if you switch from an internal combustion engine car to an EV. But what do you think? Do you think I've missed any? If you have any thoughts, put them in the comments below. Similarly, if you have any questions, the comments is a place to go for those as well. Thanks for watching.